Well, here's our first signs of destruction. <coughs> this road is always pretty clear and we have down branches and trees everywhere. Ooh, that one's gonna be more challenging up there though. Boy, oh boy, if a healthy looking tree like that can snap off, I am very curious to see what happened at the cabin. It was officially winter and the recent storms made the landscape beautiful. But that was all about to change. Christmas was only a few days away and the forecast was calling for 50 degrees and rain. And to watch the wonderland melt before our eyes as Christmas approached was sad. But maybe, if the temps cooled in the evening, it would turn to snow again. And that it did. As long as the temps held, the snow would stay for Christmas. We got it. It's a white Christmas. It was rainy and really, really wet and muddy and not very nice today. And then it cooled right off and it is absolutely squalling out right now. It's like a full on blizzard out there and we got it. In the last couple years, it's been so spotty. We haven't gotten snow till January and this year is different. This is exciting. I wanna just be outside driving around admiring it, but it's already getting dark. But man, the wind is whipping that snow. It is moving out there. Oh, I, I, I'm so happy. to go for a drive to see what our little mill town looked like in a fresh blanket. I've got my eyes close on the road here, but I just had to document this. I can't even hardly see. This is full force blizzard, unprecedented. The rain just turned to snow. It's whipping through the air. It's so thick. It's coating everything so fast. Oh, this is incredible. Christmas Eve Eve. Unbelievable! fresh snow came that childlike excitement for Christmas and all felt aligned and synchronized. And on Christmas Eve, I worked all day in the office to ready a video for Christmas morning, all while baking bread and wrapping presents and preparing for the evening at Allie's house.
my inhale decongesting mm. chest rub and awakening sound. I love it. It smells so good. Did you find any sharpies? No. And the mouth goes wild. Now, are you going to help wrap presents? Christmas loaf right there. And on Christmas morning, we headed to the little red house for a big breakfast. And by some Christmas magic, all the eggs were double yoked, the entire carton. I think maybe they must. Uh... <laughs> And I taught my niece how to make sourdough bagels from scratch. Which uh, thing do you need closed? Yeah, one second. And my dad got me a fantastic vintage wool coat, which was thicker than anything I owned. And my mom made Allie and I cozy bathrobes for the cabin, but gave us the model versions as they weren't quite ready yet. It was one of the greatest Christmas mornings I can remember in recent years. And afterwards, we headed back to town for Christmas dinner at Allie's.
and we had an incredible meal and opened presents after and stayed up late watching home videos before falling asleep on the couch. And then we all went to breakfast and later that day started a new tradition with Allie's younger sister and her boyfriend playing Settlers of Catan. And I got a beautiful postcard from my brother out west and caught a couple good sunsets. We had a little New Year's adventure out of the country coming up, and it was going to be during a warm stretch of days. So Allie and I went out to capture the beautiful fresh snow before it was gone.
and I got a couple last skis in too before the big melt. Beautiful evening, December 28th. Got rain coming, I think, in the next two days. Snow's already, it's already warmed up a bit and the snow's melting. Could be the last ski for a bit. I hope this is just a warm patch that's gonna be around for a bit and then split. Last year we didn't get snow until mid-January. And while we got treated pretty well this December, I wonder when we'll get our next batch. Could be a bit of a stagnant period, but these are the evenings that you live for. Alone in the woods, beautiful sunset, nothing but the sound of the beech leaves. There's just nothing like it. And it seemed like all the snow we got this December was wet and kept sticking to the trees, making the forests unforgettably beautiful. But that beauty would end up coming with a price. Just before the turning of the year, Ali, Noah, Kaylee, and I packed up the trooper and headed north to Canada for Ali's first ever trip out of the country.
We had three nights in Montreal surrounding New Year's, and I was so excited to show Ali the city and to spend a few good days away with my best friends. And when I happened to send a text to one of my other best friends, Hunter, who I hadn't spoke to since October, I was flabbergasted to find out that he had been living in Montreal for the whole month of December on a long-term Airbnb while he built his online business. A beautiful serendipity. I wish I could zoom in on this app. No, impossible. So we explored that city the best we could and walked many, many miles soaking it all in. Oh, nice. Wait, look at the whole like side too for Daisy Pizza for Daisy.
The tent of congregation was a portable earthly dwelling. <laughs> portable <laughs> earthly dwelling. Oh my god. <laughs> the palace of God. Wow, that looks familiar. Wait a second. There's my phone. Whoa, 
them all. Once. Five guys. Oh, five guys. <laughs> oh, five guys? Walking the this is kind of kind of wild. Brown water. Foot spots. Are you kidding me? He said him and his friends all have them that they throw parties in. Wait, wait who? Are the bar <laughs> Sorry, you don't know. <laughs> so you don't know what? this? Last you, you, night, you the bartender There's selfies on your phone with this guy. No, they have aliens in the window. Wow. That's pretty cool. Very cool. <laughs> very cool. Very. It's pretty trendy. Very, very cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up for the trend. All right, Dad. <laughs> Oh my goodness, they don't have that in Jenny. <laughs> After New Year's Eve, we had one more day and night left in our Airbnb, and we were all craving tattoos and a comedy show. Just as the sunrise starts to show, warming up the motorway, you know you felt this way before, but can't recall the time and the day. Don't know if life is as you want Something greater And when you get up this raging noise Sings to whatever And then it was back to the States To a rainy and nearly snowless landscape With a lot to get done doesn't end it's the whole way down on both sides i'm gonna have to come up here and clear this with the saw holy smokes i don't think i'm gonna uh, oh. <laughs> i don't know if i'm gonna go to get through this man look at this it's like the top of every tree just came off this is 
No joke. All the way down. I move this stuff, but I don't think this is gonna move. I think I'm gonna have to run down to the cabin, get the saw, and then clear my way back up because who knows what else is down there. It's wild how much colder it is here than in town. And I was moving stuff around and I still had to throw a coat on. In town, I was just in a long sleeve. Man, there are deer tracks everywhere. <laughs> this is, this is, uh, I've never seen this in my life. This much destruction. If this kind of stuff here was happen happening to seemingly healthy trees, they're just splitting down the middle like that, I cannot imagine what was happening to the white pines. I'm getting really nervous about the cabin. And now I realize why they didn't groom the snowmobile trails right away. I bet they are completely covered the whole way with this stuff. Just a little bit of heavy snow. I guess it was more than a little bit, but a couple of trees here or there I've seen, but not the whole way down. It's like a tornado went through. So someone's already sawed up and moved a bunch of the stuff on the main trail here, which is good. Also curious who did it, because, all right, we're just about there. And uh, already, <laughs> there's a massive, uh, that's right across from my driveway, huge clump of down, down stuff. And then here we go. So we've got some destruction for sure. <laughs> the amount of pine branches. Looks like nothing hit the old bull, which I was... Very hopeful would be the case. Man, look at the amount of branches. Got some big ones up there in the driveway. Huge one landed there. Oh geez, the poor roadies. Did they get smushed? Huh? Looks like they're all right. Yeah, all right. This stuff is uh, luckily not big and heavy, but it's certainly gonna take a while to move it all. But I'm glad there's no big trees so far. <laughs> Let's see what we got down here. Ooh, ooh, garden fence got <sighs> hit. That's a bummer, not a big deal. That's a pretty decent sized branch there. we have okay we've got some serious blueberry destruction here oh man well maybe it's not so so bad some destruction over there oh we got some oh wow i see some stuff down by the cabin man <laughs> this branch is just flying out of nowhere What's over here? Oh my goodness, look at the yard. Down over there, all in there. Nothing too, too bad that I can see so far. Oh, there's a tree hanging on for dear life. Man, the snow's still deep here. I'm walking through about six inches of snow. I haven't seen that anywhere that I've been back home so far. Looks like all the skylights are good. Oh, I forgot to cover up these roadies. I gotta do that. Uh, and this one over here looks like it ain't doing so hot from all the snow. 
Oh, jeez. So hard, so much to maintain. Whoa! River's roaring, that's great. Man, I thought it was gonna be no snow here. <laughs> and of course, the cabin still has plenty. Nothing too major by the structure. This is really good news. There's a lot in the woods all around there. Oh, what's that? We got something kind of on the roof. What's going on? Oh, got caught before it hit. That's good. All right, this is manageable. It's a lot of time of moving branches and cleaning up. Question with something like this is, do I try and pick up as much as I can now or leave it till spring? Because there's other things I wanted to do. I guess I should get all the big stuff out of the way at least. Clean it up somewhat. <sighs> it just never ends. It just never ends. That's just how it goes. Oh, so close, so close. We gotta come here for an overnight in the next couple nights. We gotta do this. We gotta finish one more overnight and we will finish. There's just a few more. There's like baseboard trim. Need a couple boards down right here. On the wall, there's just one little gap. Uh, I gotta do the soffit and rest of the windows. One, two, three, four, five more windows. Shouldn't take that long. I know I can do it if we spend one overnight here. Also, you probably noticed I got a new tattoo. Make sure this is focused. <clears throat> it says uh, I got it in Montreal. I got another one too, small one. It says Decoline which if you watched in the fall, you know I wrote a little song called the same, called De Colline, and it means of the hills in French. And I'm part French Canadian, so I've always liked French, I took it in high school. Um, and then it's got an outline of one of my favorite views in the Berkshires with a crescent moon, which is my favorite kind of moon, and Orion's belt and a couple other stars, so. I love being able to see things every day that remind me of who I am and what I love. And that's what pretty much all my tattoos are for me. And then here's the other one. It's a stone fly, which is a fly that trout eat all around here, but especially where I grew up on the river. I would go out to the river every day and you'll see these little white and black shells, like casings on the rocks. And those are stone flies that have crawled from that state that they are on my tattoo onto the rock and then hatched into a fly. And they'll fly up and down the river and then trout will eat them. Trout also eat the ones before they hatch, but. Walking back to the car and uh, been clearing a bunch as I go. There's so many footprints on the ground. There's, it doesn't look like a dog. It looks more like a raccoon, but it's big. And there's deer and little bunny prints and all sorts of stuff. But uh, I was just thinking as I was walking, I had this kind of pre-programmed urge to reach into my pocket, grab my phone and check social media whether or not we would like to admit it i think we all kind of do that especially us younger folk and something i did this year something i did for new year's was delete instagram and twitter and i don't really use twitter or tiktok or anything but i deleted them i have youtube just because that's my main, my main gig, but I don't really use it for pleasure on my phone. Only if I have to look up a tutorial to fix something or whatnot. But uh, 
Yeah, I've always been torn about this. I, I mean, I'm not deleting my Instagrams. That's where I got my start on social media and where I started sharing my art with the world. And still to this day, have my biggest following on Instagram at Kyle Finn Dempsey. And then got the Trout and Coffee Instagram and then a personal one. But it feels weird. It's it's such a habit to to just pick it up and scroll. And... I don't do it that often though, not like I used to. And really the only thing I'm looking for is news or updates. But even that, you don't need it. It's like we're programmed now because everybody has it to feel like we have to constantly know everything that's happening all around the world. And and then you can't, you almost get like scorned if you're not up to date or tuned in or you didn't hear about that. And then you think back in the day, when, you know, settlers, people that were living off the land, the only problems they had were what was right in front of them. They didn't know what was going on around the world. And in all honesty, it's okay. I mean, you don't need to know what's, you know, the, even if there are bad things, like, it doesn't affect you here. In your life, in your community, and people are so programmed nowadays to be obsessed with every bad thing going on in the world and every good thing and we've seen everything we know about everything and one of my goals for this year is to spend less time on my phone less time on social media i'm re i'm just going to focus on creating my films and yeah, just not having the distraction. I want to focus on real life in the here and now, in the place I live, in my community, and put my energy into that. Not hashtags and pictures of things that don't matter or whatever. I, w I want to be here and now. So I'm really excited about this. I've already all day today, I've caught myself... What is that? piece of wood? I've caught myself like... I'll be on my phone to do something and then I'll close the app that I was actually doing something productive on and then I have this urge to go click Instagram just because I'm on my phone. And so many times today I went to do that and it's deleted and I can. It's just like, wow, I probably just saved five to ten minutes of my life and now I'm going to go get something done. And that adds up throughout the day a lot. And then just not having... The distraction or it's it's almost like a crutch you know you're standing in line at the coffee shop at the bank whatever and take out your phone and you go on instagram because it's almost like people just they can't just stand there anymore they can't just look at what's around there or make eye contact with someone or maybe spark up a conversation they just go on their phone so i want to just be present as often as i can and that's the plan for this year. I have been so tempted to, for years, to get a flip phone. John has a flip phone and I deeply admire that in so many ways. All, you can get them by phone and every once in a while you can get them by text, but not often and that's it. And he's not on any social media whatsoever, doesn't know you know, none of the trendy things, not involved in any of it. And I, for the longest time, wouldn't get a flip phone because I needed social media. That was how I was making my living. Still is, but YouTube is a, is like kind of the granddad social media in a sense where it's not, it's not really social media. It's, it's like, it's, yes, they have some short form stuff, but it's really long form storytelling it's it's like a, it's like netflix more than it's like tiktok um and so i would 100 percent get a flip phone the only reason that i can't well i can but that i that i'm hesitant still is because i i'm filming on my phone right now I use, I film so much stuff on my phone, like on days when I don't feel like bringing out my big camera or when I'm in public or around friends or there's so many circumstances where 
it just isn't possible to use my big camera all the time. And it's so easy to use my phone and the camera is so good. But man, if it wasn't for that, that even lends itself to like, you can't even use GPS. You have to go into a store and ask someone for directions or look at a map. And that just makes you so much more in tune with your surroundings. It makes you remember what it is you looked up and sought after. We're, our information is just so gratuitous this, these days. You just reach in your pocket and you can find out anything in the world at any second. You don't have to go to, through, to a library, look through a bunch of books. And while it's great in so many ways, it also, you know, it's, it's like that law of how much is too much before it's not good anymore. Like you eat too much broccoli and then it's not really good for you anymore. You'll get sick. You have too much, too many ways to do things. Like, all right, you're looking to build a shed. Back in the day, you'd go to a library and you'd get a book on how to build a shed. And it would tell you exactly how to do it in a good way. And you'd learn one good way to do it. Nowadays, you want to learn that. You go on YouTube. There's thousands of videos. This guy does it this way. This guy does it that way. And before you know it, you've watched way more than you even need. And then you don't, <laughs> you don't know which one you like best or what some guy said that made sense. This guy says is wrong. And so then you get confused. And at the end of the day, you don't even end up building a shed because there's just too many ways to do it. It's like, just wanted to share that with you. If you've been leaning towards maybe getting rid of social media, just do it. You know, real change is supposed to be uncomfortable. It's supposed to feel a little weird at first. And you're never going to make real change if you don't actually do something uncomfortable. It has to actually feel weird and make you question yourself or question your decision. So... Give it a shot. chairs from a family friend and those will go on either end. Today I just brought this this old tin that's going to be for kindling then we got the bushway table and I brought in this old piece of barnwood from John's grandfather's farm which I'm going to use to make either either probably a table and uh, that little this handmade flower thing. I believe this was in the cabin when I got it. Well, I'm so hungry that I'm about to keel over, but I gotta do one last thing before I leave. I wanna see if that old red truck will start up. It's early January, it's a new year. I'm feeling very optimistic. I've got a game plan for change, for finishing what was started, and I'm just hungry. I'm hungry to f <laughs> not, well, actually, yes, but I'm hungry to finish these things I started and to, to fix some things that I did wrong. I'm ready to sell some vehicles. I'm ready to save up some money, get out of debt. I'm ready to get a farm where Allie and I, where she can have her own workshop for her business and I can have my own music studio and we can have a self-sustainable garden and yada 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 i'm ready to to do it 
it's gonna take a lot of work and there's still so much to be done, but I'm feeling hopeful. And this little patch right now of warmer weather and rain, while it's a bummer that we don't get the ski and snowmobile and all that, this is our chance to finish the cabin and we're gonna do it. We're gonna get here starting probably tomorrow and then the next day and the next day and the next day. I wanna finish this thing. I wanna get the couch in. I wanna have it be cozy. I want it to be ready. So that's what's happening next. I know I'm gonna have that pinch me moment where I sit down at that little table with the wood stove roaring and Allie maybe cooking one of her beautiful dinners and just me sit there staring at all the little details, thinking about all the memories, everything it took to get to that point and I'm just gonna know that it was all worth it. No matter what happens with this place, I've got something. This will always be my little spot in the hills down by the river. All right, key on. Gas pedal halfway. Hold it for a little bit. Let off. Now, pull the choke. In. Thank you.